Alright, with Super Mario Bros. Wonder about to release in a little under a week, Nintendo has been releasing teaser after teaser promoting the latest game being added to the Mario franchise. So in this video, we're going to be going over everything you need to know before you buy this game, which includes everything that has been released so far by Nintendo, along with other pieces of information released about the game up till now. So now with the intro out of the way, let's get to the rundown. First things first, let's talk about the price the game will be sold at, and any other bundles that you could potentially buy for those living in other countries. So right off the bat, the game just by itself will be sold for $59.99 USD or $79.99 CA. And that's for digital and physical copies only. But if you live in the UK, there is a bundle that is available for purchase called the Super Mario Bros. Wonder Mega Bundle that's going for £63.49, which comes with a physical copy of the game along with a talking flower figure from the game and a 2D diorama with magnets. I'm not 100% sure if the flower figure will actually talk as it doesn't specify on the Nintendo Store website, so I'm assuming not. But now with the price of the game said and done, let's get into the contents of the actual game now. So once you brew up the game and press the left and right trigger together, you will be greeted by the screen which will grant you the option of choosing a multitude of different characters from Mario all the way to Yoshi and Nabbit. But just to note, every character apart from Yoshi and Nabbit plays the exact same, so it's not like Mario 2 or 3D World where every character has their own unique ability. The only difference between the characters is the fact that they are different characters. That's it. But for the Yoshis and Nabbit, they've actually been given the ability to not take damage and not be able to use power-ups. The reason for these characters is purely for people that are beginners or aren't that good at these types of games in general. So if you want want to relax and not worry about dying over and over again, use these characters for a risk free time. But just remember that every other character except for those two play the exact same no matter who you pick. And now with the characters done, let's get to the overall story of what will be happening in the game as this time around, Mario will not be saving Peach like he always does and honestly hasn't done since Mario Odyssey. But basically how it goes is, Mario and the gang have been invited to the Flower Kingdom by Prince Florian, which is a kingdom just beyond the Mushroom Kingdom, to I assume show off the Wonder Flower to the gang. This is not confirmed by and intend to be the case, just an assumption I made from the intro cutscene. But Bowser, being the evil creature that he is, uses the Wonder Flower's power to merge with Prince Florian's castle and become a far more dangerous foe than he originally was. And it's up to Mario and the gang to stop Bowser's plans to destroy the Flower Kingdom and secure the Wonder Power within him. So overall, they're basically stopping Bowser once again without the whole kidnapping Peach thing, which you honestly could have guessed at this point. And also, a quick side note is that there will be seven areas, also known as worlds, that we will be able to play in this game. But since we usually get eight worlds, in these games instead of the seven being advertised in this game, Nintendo's probably keeping the eighth one a secret, just like with World Bowser and 3D World. But since we're on the topic of the Wonder Flower, let's get into the power ups in this game and what they will be bringing to the table in terms of what they actually do. So, first off, let's talk about the Wonder Flower itself to begin with, since we saw what it does to Bowser already. But what does it do when we touch it as one of the members of Mario's gang? Well, a variety of things actually happen depending on what level you're in. Essentially, the Wonder Flower transforms the level into a completely different level, as the layout of the level can completely change along with the perspective or your character altogether. And the best thing about this is that no two wonders in the game are alike, which means you'll never get the same wonder sequence twice as each one is unique to the level you're playing in. But the only way to revert the level back to normal again is to touch the wonder seed which will appear during a wonder and will most of the time appear in the middle or near the end of a wonder sequence. These seeds are used for unlocking certain stages that you come across, so be sure to collect those seeds as you see them throughout the levels. And you are guaranteed a seed every time you clear stage from a poplin as well. And some of the other power-ups that we've seen in the build to release this game have been the elephant form, the bubble form, drill form, and the fire form. And to recap what these power-ups do really quick, the elephant form transforms your character into an elephant which allows you to use your trunk as an attack while standing and while crouching. You're also able to keep water in your trunk and release it when you're ready to activate certain plants or items scattered around the levels. You're also able to use your size to your advantage as well which is pretty useful. The bubble form is essentially like any other fire or ice flower power-up found in the new Super Mario Bros series, except the bubbles in this form, are able to destroy dry bones right off the bat, and are also able to be used as temporary platforms as well, as they pop as soon as you jump on them, and in my opinion, it's one of the more powerful forms in this game. But next up is the drill form, which is able to block any enemies or objects that fall from above, like spinies or rocks for example, and also allows you to drill into the floor or the ceiling to get to any enclosed areas, or avoid huge groups of enemies that you'd rather not want to deal with. Overall, this is one of the more unique power-ups to be added to the Mario franchise thus far. And finally, the fire flower makes a return to the game which works exactly how it always does. I'm not 100% sure if it'll serve another purpose in the game other than just being used as a normal fire flower because apart from all the other power ups in the game it doesn't stand out as much as it's not a new addition to the game at all like the other ones. So I predict that this power up may serve as another use later on in the game because from the gameplay we've seen so far it just serves as an ordinary power up you use throughout the levels as normal. So if that's the case so be it. But it would be pretty cool to see one of the original power ups in the game be given an upgrade or have a different purpose in the game 
rather than just being a regular old fire flower. But that's just me. But now that we're done with the power ups, we can now move on to the most unique addition added to any Mario game so far, which are the badges, which honestly took me by surprise when I first saw these in the direct. These badges essentially work as permanent power ups throughout a level, but you can only equip one at a time per level. At the moment, only 14 badges have been revealed so far, and if you'd like to know what each of these badges actually do, check out the video linked in the description below for when I ranked all the power ups and badges while describing what each one does. But in my opinion, badges in the game is probably one of the most unique things to ever be added to a Mario game as it adds more creativity and freedom to what can actually be done in this game rather than just playing these levels over and over again with the same set of tools being given to you. With these in the game, there are a multitude of ways that you can play each level and be able to challenge yourself with using certain badges and levels that may not work well with it equipped. So we'll definitely see a lot of different things be done with these badges once the game comes out, but overall, a really cool addition to the Mario franchise in the grand scheme of things. And finally, the thing we've all been waiting for, let's go over the multiplayer mechanics that will be added to this game. Unlike other 2D Mario games in this franchise, this will be the first one to have online multiplayer, which is a really cool addition, as New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe didn't have an online multiplayer option even though it was a multiplayer game on the Nintendo Switch, which was really weird to be honest. But multiplayer does have different mechanics versus just playing alone, such as the standee option, which is primarily used as a respawn point for your character once you die in the game. But standees can also be used for reviving your already dead teammates in the form of a ghost, as they only have 5 seconds to be revived before they disappear I guess. I'm not 100% sure what happens if you don't revive them in that time to be honest, but just like in the new Super Mario Bros series with the bubble mechanic, in this game, once a player dies, they'll turn into a ghost and will have 5 seconds to revive themselves by either being hit by their teammates or interacting with the standee which can be placed at any point in time. But overall this game will most likely be a really big turning point in the Mario franchise as so much creativity and time has been put into this game and everything just feels so different compared to every other 2D game in this franchise to date. I said this in my previous video and I'll say it again, this game is the modern version of Super Mario World as it seems like it will have a similar impact that that game did all those years ago. And without Super Mario World we probably wouldn't have some of the great games we have today. So if what I say is true, we have a bright future ahead of us with this franchise and I'm really excited to see where this goes. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. Hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did and are as excited as I am for this game, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as I'll be covering anything and everything that Nintendo releases about this game and we'll be making videos on it when it finally does release. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace!